So in today's video, I'd like to talk about Apple's recent move into XR by unveiling the Apple Vision Pro. I'd like to look at a few specs, share my opinion about them, and lastly, we're going to be doing a deep look into developer tools, including native versus Unity tools that were recently announced. Just to get started, there is a laminated glass on the device. I actually posted a video previously, which was a render, and it had a, basically a glass material on the outside of the device. And it happened to be that this device actually has the same thing. So that is it's really cool to know that that render was very similar to what we get. There's also aluminum material on the inner side of the Apple Vision Pro. So the aluminum kind of looks like the aluminum that we see on the iPhone devices. And specifically when, when I looked at it, I thought, I'm like, this looks really similar to the iPhone one. And I actually have an iPhone one frame that I'm showing you right now. And that kind of gave me the idea, oh, this is very similar to that. So it's pretty cool to know that Apple, it's just starting a new era with a device that kind of looked like the iPhone one when it was first released. It just has that really cool minimalistic look. So the device, the look and feel, I think it looks amazing. There's also a digital crown that they put on this device. That was something that was a rumor and it's actually pretty cool to know that they actually did it. So that means that we're going from basically a non-immerse, what they call immerse versus full immerse. So immerse means it's mixed reality. So the digital crown, as you change it, it changes from a full immerse, which is the VR, to an actual mixed reality experience. So they are using different terms as well. And that's something that they talked about through many of the WWDC talks. So there's also going to be 4K display per eye. Basically, the, if you look at the MetaQuest 2 and actually the Pro resolution is, I think, 1920 by 1800. So this device is going to have that on basically 4K or more on each one of the displays, which is pretty, pretty impressive. I haven't actually tested the device, but I can't imagine if the MetaQuest Pro looks amazing. I can't comprehend how it's going to look on this new device. So there's also going to be an outer display for the eyes, just like we saw on the rumors. They show it on the trailer in multiple videos. Never saw it on anybody that was testing the device. I don't know if they're still working on it. I would assume they're still working on it. And then by the time that it's available, either through a dev kit, which happens to be next month in July, or by the beginning of next year, which is when they're going to be releasing this device to the public. So we'll see if the actual eyes displays on the outer display actually make it. The battery, according to what I saw on the specs, is going to be up to two hours. And again, if you compare that to MetaQuest Pro, which is what I'm using for comparison, it's about two to three hours. So that's about the same. They are really crazy processors on this device. On uh, the video that I made previously, I talked about having two M2s. They're actually gonna have two different processors. One of them is going to be an M2 and an R1. One, which is the M2, is gonna run, I think it's gonna be the Vision OS operating system and also some computer algorithm, computer vision algorithms that they're gonna have. So it's pretty impressive that they're splitting the processing power. And then the R1 is going to be basically dedicated for getting the input from the cameras, and then basically they're going to be separating the processing. The other thing that is important about the R1 is that they're using that to stream the image from what you see on the display and basically render it on the actual display. So there's actually not going to be a controller on this device. There's gonna be hand tracking. You can also use eye tracking and there's also going to be voice. So if you remember when I did the HoloLens intro videos and also development videos, I, I was doing retina, basically unlocking the device with my eyes, and I was also using hand tracking. There is no controllers on the HoloLens 2 either. So this makes sense to me to have Apple do something similar with their device because they try to keep things very minimalistic and hand tracking after so many different iterations, different companies doing hand tracking, they release it at a point where it's so mature that it's going to work really well. In my opinion, I think hand tracking is the way to go. There's people that like controllers and I can see the use cases for those. But for what I see on these devices, having hand tracking, I think makes sense to me. So now on the developer tools, which is why you probably are here, I am excited to say that there is going to be multiple options, right? So for those of you who follow me, you know that I do a lot of things with Unity. 
I touch on Unreal. I haven't really done much with native code in iOS other than applications that I wrote a long time ago, but these devices are going to support Swift UI. And Swift UI basically gives you functionality for rendering volumes, rendering basically UI, and it has some advanced UI components that you can use with Xcode. There's also Reality Kit, and Reality Kit, it's this framework behind the scenes that allows you to play 3D content. You also have access to ARKit features. It's basically also available with Reality Composer. When I looked at the documentation, Reality Composer was also included in that. So if you want to use Swift UI and then Reality Kit, Reality Kit will allow you to do the mixed reality experiences. So that's all going to be on the native side. There's also ARKit that is available on the native side if you're doing development for the Apple Vision Pro. So those are going to be the three ones. So Swift UI, Reality Kit, and also ARKit are going to be the native. And those are supposed to be releasing by the end of this month. Right now, we are in June, June 2023. So according to the website, that's what I saw. I don't know if that's going to happen, but there's going to be an SDK that is released right away. So that's really cool. I think there's just a lot of opportunity on the native side. On the Unity side, there's a lot of things going on. And in that part, I'm really excited about. So. There's going to be two different experience types that you can develop in Unity right now. There's going to be an immersive experience, and that means that we're going to have mixed reality. And that's the term that, again, Apple is using. I don't know why they changed the name, but that's what they call it, immersive. So just know that that's basically a pass-through experience. There is also going to be what they call a shared space. And a shared space is the idea of having multiple apps running at the same time. Not really on a, on the background, but more like the HoloLens. I don't know if you guys seen the HoloLens, but I'm gonna, I'm gonna show you how that looks. Basically, you can have multiple apps running. I can have a pet app you know, running. I can have a painting app. I can have a browser in here. And Meta does that in some ways where you can have multiple windows, but this is more of a 3D type experience running in this bounded area and you can share you know, you can share the space with other apps, even though you didn't write those apps yourself. So that is really cool. So that's the immersive experience and also that share a space experience. There's also going to be a fully immersed experience. And I thought it was kind of funny because fully immersed to me, I don't know why they don't just call it VR. I think it should be called VR because that's what it is. But the concept of a fully immersed experience is that basically you are in a VR experience. There's nothing that you see on the real world. And again, I mean, it's Apple. They, they can make up the terms. They're pretty big. They make amazing products and amazing software. So I, I would start calling it that. I would, you know, we can call it both ways. It doesn't really matter at the end of the day, as long as we know what it means. I think that's the part that is really important. So on the, on the Unity side, there's a lot of things. One thing that I'm going to mention is that there is this new thing that is called Poly Special. And Poly is special to me, it's like this translator, right? This is going to allow you to translate shaders and materials, also different components like a skin mesh, like a mesh render, particle effects. Basically, they're, they build this component that is going to be the one that does all the conversion into either Reality Kit or anything that is needed for the Apple Vision Pro that is compatible because there's some things that they mentioned that won't work out of the bat. They are pushing heavy on the universal rendering pipeline, so they recommend that you move to URP. URP and also the built-in rendering pipeline are going to be supported. If you're using URP, you're going to get more of a variety of options. So if you're using URP, you can use physically based materials, and they are a lit material, also a simple lit, and also a complex lit. So those are gonna be three different materials available for those. And then if you're using the built-in rendering pipeline, only support to the standard material, which means that if you have any custom materials or shaders that you build yourself, that's not going to be supported. They are recommending that you start using and migrating your shaders to use Shader Graph because they are going to be supporting Shader Graph 100%, and that's basically how they are planning these going forward. So developers will start using Shader Graph, and those materials that I mentioned that are built with Shader Graph are going to be fully supported. Simulation effects and simulation features, that's what they call them, like physics, animations, pathfinding, all of those are going to be 
support it. The one that I'm really excited about, it's the play on device. You know how much work I did. If you don't know, I did a lot of work on AirKit in the past with Air Foundation. And one of my biggest struggles was why didn't Unity build uh, a remote that we could use for development so that we didn't have to build to the device every single time we make a little change. And unfortunately enough, there was a guy that did an asset on the Unity Asset Store and I was able to use it. And, but it wasn't something that was part of Unity. So it was always like, okay, if this is out of date, then we need to get an update. So with the Apple Vision Pro, they're building, and they already built a tool into PolySpatial that allows you to basically play on the device. So we're gonna be able to write code in Unity and then play on the device, see it right on the device, tweak it, change the colors, and then that just makes it a lot easier for us to test things, right? So the same way goes with the actual simulator that the team on Apple is providing. That simulator that it's going to be part of Xcode is also going to be available if you hit play in Unity. That's actually going to go also into the simulator. So in Unity, there's going to be two different cameras. One of them is going to be a bounded camera. And that means that you're gonna get this little bounding area that you're gonna have access to and your app can be. So if you have a, a tabletop type game, maybe it's a chess game, you're going to be able to build within that boundary and they'll give you like a transformation, the position, rotation, and scale of, of that little area. And you can move it around within the shared space, but you can really scale that area because it's going to be confined to this transform that they, that they are providing that Apple is actually restricting. The other thing that also it's important, there's going to be an unbounded camera as well. And that means that we're going to have access to the entire space. This could be a pass-through experience or a fully immersed experience. Input that is going to be supported is going to be eye tracking. And that makes sense because that's going to be some of the inputs that the Apple Vision Pro also provides. Hands is also going to be coming in handy. And that data is going to be coming into the XR Hands package that I cover in the channel. I'll link and put the video above so you guys can see how that works. It's going to be heavily relying on the XR toolkit and also the XR hands package that basically keeps a level of abstraction between multiple different platforms so that if we have Pico coming in and they have hand tracking, they can actually implement an adapter that adheres to this contract. And then we can use the same package for multiple things. So what Apple Vision Pro is doing is they're doing the same thing. They're using that same package with PolySpatial to get that data, that skeleton data into Unity. So just know that that's going to be also available. There's also going to be access to, to AirKit. So we'll have plane detection, we'll have world mesh, image markers are going to be also available. There's also anchors that are going to be available and the way that anchors work on this system, it's kind of like magic because they'll basically take care of the persisting nature of them and then basically relocate them. If you don't have those anchors or you're not in that area anymore, they'll basically unload those automatically for you versus all the crazy code that we had to write for the meta, you know, the meta anchors that we had to create and then other systems. So they're taking care of a lot of that. I don't know how, that, how that's going to work yet, but I know that it's going to be a lot easier to handle anchors in the Apple Vision Pro. So. The other thing with AirKit though, is like if you're using the bounded area, AirKit is not going to be supported in the bounding area because you're sharing the space with the other applications. So in that case, then you're not gonna have plane detection, you're not gonna have meshing, at least not within the access of your own application. But if you're using that in an unbounded type experience where you have the full immersive experience, then in that case, you can use AirKit, which is what they're saying in their instructions. So there's also going to be access to keyboard controllers and other supported devices can be accessed through the new input system. They do recommend that you do use the new input system. You don't do the legacy or do a mix type support. As a rule of thumb, if you're building an application today, I would make sure that your application, it's going to be upgraded to Unity 2022 or later. That's going to be the requirement. You also look and see how you can start upgrading to URP. Also make sure that all your shaders are also built with shader graph. The next thing, make sure that you're moving to the new input package and that's going to be 
what Unity, you know, plans going forward. That's honestly everything. There's a lot that I didn't cover that I'm going to be covering next, but I just wanted to tell you that I'm really excited about the Apple Vision Pro. I'm really excited about the technology. I think moving to hand tracking and no controllers is gonna be very interesting. I know a lot of people that are not happy about it. In my case, I think it's a really great thing. I think we should have more, you know, more support, more features and more experiences built around hand tracking that I haven't seen as much in other devices because controllers are some of the things that they support, but that might change, who knows? Maybe Apple brings in, you know, different controllers in the future. I don't know, we'll see what happens in the future. I'm really excited about this. If you guys have any questions about anything that I mentioned, let me know. I'll be linking a lot of the talks on the description so that you know and you have reference to some of the things that I mentioned in today's video. And that's everything for today, guys. So if you can subscribe and hit the notification bell, please do so because that's gonna help me in understanding that you're enjoying these type of videos and you wanna see more videos about the Apple Vision Pro and about all the other devices and technologies that I'm teaching today. Thank you very much, guys.